If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to the latest edition of the Shukri Rights Podcast with your host, Shukri Rights. Here we are. It's now approaching almost two weeks for many of us who have been in self-quarantine. But for myself, yours truly, this is day one of self-quarantine and whatnot. I actually attempted to stay in um, on consecutive days, but I just couldn't do it. And frankly... It drove me to the point of near insanity, so I had to run out and go pick up some essential items and so forth. But considering all things, I hope everybody is handling the coronavirus pandemic in stride, although although it is certainly um, some very difficult um, days for a lot of people. Um, I certainly understand that. And for those who are bun- bunkering in, and, you know, like do the self-quarantine and so forth. Um, my my heartfelt respect and for everyone that's taking it seriously so that we could beat this pandemic as fast as we possibly can. And it's definitely something that, um, that I myself have decided to, um, you know, really amp up my efforts and take it seriously, only leaving the house for the essentials and so forth. And... And thankfully, um, so far, so good. Can't complain. And this podcast is to help, you know, distract, you know, everyone from what's going on and so forth. Um, And I I mean, for myself, who lives here in Boston, Massachusetts, um, the governor um, issuing an order um, to to basically stay home for all non-essential workers. Um, so it started um, two hours ago, as a matter of fact, and it will continue from now until April 7th. So basically for the next uh, two weeks. So we're all in this together. And I hope that you are able to make the most of it and that you're able to stay healthy, most importantly. And more importantly, stay grateful. You know, be grateful for the little things that we have now. And and I got to tell you, like difficult times has an interesting way of reinforcing what's truly important in life, all the while remembering the blessings that we have. Allow me to explain. So oftentimes we are so wrapped up in 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 a daily hustle and bustle in our lives that we really you know, overlook small little blessings and so forth. And and it's a shame. And it really is because we just don't realize at times just how blessed we are. And, and it's often through times like this, through crisis and times of challenge and difficulty and, and so forth, that we are reminded of exactly what we have. And listen, if you have a roof over your head, family who's healthy, food in your fridge, clothes on your back, a pot to piss in, so to speak, then you're wealthy. It's it's true. I mean, then you are very fortunate. And I can't even begin to imagine um, those who are like the less less fortunate and so forth. Um, And those who are sick, battling this, um, this virus, um, I sent my wholehearted and and heartfelt heart like you know well wishes to all of those who are affected by this and so forth. 
So I want to talk about in this episode, um, Tom Brady. Tom Brady has left the New England Patriots. And I mentioned for those who listened in the last episode of the podcast that I was going to do my part to explain my point of view in terms of the impact that it has here in New England and as well as the social impact in New England as well because it's absolutely enormous. And despite the the, the pandemic and the uh, tough quarantine that's going on, we really won't feel and get the full grasp of the impact of Brady's departure until after this is all over. And especially as we get closer to the start of the 2020 NFL season, but that remains to be seen. So let's start with talking about Tom Brady. We all know that Brady is the greatest of all time. That is not up for debate. That's not up for discussion and so forth. And I got to tell you, if you are a Patriots fan right now, I know that these are some really sad times, sad days, um, days where you're just like, why? And as well as there are those who are like, okay, this happened and let's move on. I myself, I'm one of those who are in the, or in a group of, all right, it happened. It sucks but we still got to move forward. And the thing that I find most fascinating about all of this is that here in New England, and those who live in New England know that basically that what Brady means to the New England Patriots. And frankly, people here in New England and all Patriot fans also basically worship the guy. I mean, listen, this is the guy that, that has brought the franchise to nine Super Bowl appearances, six Super Bowl championships. Could have easily been eight. Could have been eight, but that's a whole nother discussion for another time. So, with that being said, this is a man who has helped brought so much joy and happiness to New England and to the Patriots over 20 years. And the fact of the matter is, is that he's no longer here. And there are a lot of people who are wondering, well, who would you blame or who would you like point the finger at? And I'm just saying, listen, um, I, I don't think I would necessarily point the finger at Brady and or Belichick and so forth. But I do have some opinions and thoughts on that a little later in the episode. And that's just something to to absolutely um, think about. And, you know, one thing, if you talk about, for example, what the Patriots have done over the last 20 years as a whole, just just as a whole, let's look back at 2001, 2003, 2004, the first half of the dynasty. We won three Super Bowl titles in four years, which included back-to-back Super Bowl championships in 03 and 04, and which that we were also the last team to actually have um, have won back-to-back Super Bowl titles and so forth. Brady himself was that security blanket in which that early on we knew that we have someone pretty special. There, there was no debate about that. And one thing I really have come to appreciate about Brady is, is that if you want to look as at a guy who is a prime example of turning a negative into a positive, that's the guy. Think about it. He was drafted in the sixth round, 199th pick overall. Instead of moping, and moaning and complaining. This is what he did. And what he did was he said, you know what? We are going to use this to, as motivation to make myself better. And that in itself, if you 
want to use that as a as a tool to drive you to greatness, you can and you should. And Brady did exactly just that. And the impact of what he has meant to New England, and especially now that he is gone, that he is officially signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I mean, just even saying Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback Tom Brady just doesn't sound or feel right. And even for me, that's gonna take a take a bit to, you know, get used to it. And it's just it just feels weird. But the harsh reality of sports is is that you very rarely all across find legends staying in one place at a particular time their entire careers. It's rare. I mean, you look across all professional sports. Hell, you can look at the NBA, baseball. For me, look at Jordan. He's always going to be known as a Chicago Bull, but did he end his career in Chicago? No, he ended his career with the Washington Wizards. Go figure. Heck, you want to talk baseball? Okay, sure. I'll give you an actual example. Baseball. You want to talk about someone who, who, who's base, who, who will forever be associated with one team, but ended his career elsewhere. I'm gonna give you an example right now. Think of, think of. Um, pardon me, as, as I as I get it mixed up. John Smoltz. Forever will be Atlanta Brave, but he ended his career as a St. Louis Cardinal in 09. Go figure. And the NHL, you got Wayne Gretzky. Thought that he would end his career as an Edmonton Oiler, end his career as a New York Ranger. With stops that included with the Los Angeles Kings and the St. Louis Blues in between. So this has become, and also in terms of the NFL, Joe Montana. Started his career with the 49ers and his career with the Kansas City Chiefs. Go figure. So it goes to show you that it is incredibly rare that that a legend plays one team his entire career, 20 years. It's rare. It just doesn't happen anymore. And I know there's a lot of sentimental feelings out there in regards to Brady. Oh, he should have stayed a Patriot and so forth. I listen. I'm I am just as any other Patriots fan out there, but a bit more level headed, and understanding that this is a business, and Belichick has shown the ruthless side of that business throughout his entire tenure here in New England. Even Brady, as we all learned, was no exception, and that in itself is the biggest message of it all. Belichick didn't play favorites, and Brady wanted to feel as if he wanted to feel appreciated. He didn't feel appreciated, and he talked about that in in an episode of Time vs. Time, in which that, although he didn't say it, but his wife, Giselle, was the one that pointed it out, if you may remember. So it was one of those things that he said, you know what? No, I'm done. I'm out. And it was Brady who, who drove to to Robert Kraft's house. It was Brady who called Bill Belichick, apparently. And that was the end of Tom Brady here in New England. And it's going to be so strange, especially on Sundays now, in which you turn on the TV to watch Patriots football, and Tom Brady is no longer under center. It's going to be strange. Let's just be completely honest about it. And it's completely okay. Think about this for a moment. I, for, I'm going to just use myself as an example. I live here in Boston. And every Sunday in the fall, Patriots football is a religion. It's a religion. It is worshipped. It is absolutely... Oh, that is more important than just about anything else going on in the city or in the region on that given day, whether it's a Sunday, 
afternoon or a Sunday night or a Monday night football or Thursday night football even, in which basically everybody watches. And Tom Brady is the guy who, who popped on your TV for 20 years. This Sunday, now I want you to imagine this. And the sad part is we're all going to experience it this fall as part of the new reality here. And that is you turn on the TV to a Patriots game and it's not Brady under center anymore. It'll either be Jared Stidham. Heck, who knows? Maybe Brian Hoyer now that he's back. and Or who knows? Maybe a free agent quarterback that, that Belichick might decide to bring in. After all, Cam Newton was just released by the Carolina Panthers. So that's definitely one big name to keep an eye out for, perhaps, potentially. Maybe New England is the perfect spot for him. Who knows? We just don't know. But with that being said, it's going to be absolutely strange watching Patriots football this fall and not seeing Brady under center wearing number 12, wearing the navy blue. It's going to be it's going to be weird. I will also add this as well. And 20 years we have been so spoiled with success. Especially when it comes to like winning and so forth. Now that Brady's gone, the question is going to be this. What do fans think or expect in terms of what's going to be the new barometer for success for the Patriots. Because the Patriots the last 20 years have been defined by championships, making deep playoff runs, and so forth. And that's just the truth. However, the reality is that none of that is no longer a guarantee. I mean, every year that the Patriots made a run to the Super Bowl, I mean, there there were no guarantees. But the fact of the matter is, is that there was a chance. Every year, they had a chance because there was a combination of Tom Brady and and Bill Belichick. Brady's gone. It's now Bill Belichick. And there are no, there are no certainties anymore. And perhaps, maybe, just maybe, that the Patriots players could use this as motivation, considering that a lot of the media and even some of the fans, but other fans of the other 31 NFL teams, as they have all said since January, oh, the dynasty is done. They have no shot. It's over. Accept it. And so forth. I mean, you already got one of the players today was actually sent to me in a notification from Yahoo Sports essentially basically one they say you know what we're going to use this as a source of motivation and I'm like you know what you're damn right you damn right use it as a source of motivation use it as a source to say you know what one player and I know he's the greatest to ever play that position does not define success and our ability to compete they don't which is why psychologically there is going to be an absolute shift in thinking. And I've heard it from friends who are also Patriot fans. And Bill, we trust. Oh. Oh, oh, really? Okay. So it's going to be fascinating to see how many people are saying, in Bill, we trust if this team struggles out of the gate. And let's face it. The New England Patriots have have been known in the last few years to get off to get off the slow starts before finally finding their footing and so forth. That's a fact. But this year, this season, and we don't even know what the schedule is, but we do know who the Patriots will be facing in terms of opponents. But if the Patriots are off to a slow start after five or six games, how much? Do you still trust Bill Belichick? How many of you will still be saying, and Bill, we trust? 
that's something that you got to ask. You got to really wonder because it's easy to trust someone when everything is good. Everything is copacetic. But when things get a bit rough and get a bit patchy, do you still trust? Do you still believe? That's just something to think about. Because we've been so accustomed to over the last, what, 16, 17 years, no less than 11 wins, essentially. That's what this region and this city has been accustomed to. But what if this team goes 8-8 eight and eight or 9-7 and seven in a playoff appearance? Then what? Then what do you do? Do you say, huh, this is, a, this, is a, this is a failure? Or do you say that, you know what, this is a successful season? Again, part of the major impact that Brady leaving New England will have is, is that do you, do you still maintain a same level of expectation and that same level of success post Brady. That's going to be the test in its in itself. And I'm actually really eager to see what's next. Is Jared Stidham going to be the guy? No one knows. And I listen to a lot of sports talk and I am a sports talk personality myself. I host the, the Shukri Wright Show on 91.5 FM WMFO, and st- which also streams nationally on the TuneIn Radio app. And I, I hear it from people all the time and so forth that, oh, Stedham's not the guy. Oh, but look what happened last time that Stedham was put into a game. He threw the pick six against the Jets. I got news for you. You cannot possibly try to indicate whether if a guy is going to be the next franchise quarterback or not based on one pass. That's asinine. And anyone that says that they know it and they believe it is lying. You're absolutely lying and you're just absolute full of crap. And know what's interesting about all of this as well? I said, if you're the New England Patriots, I'm telling you, this whole season, there's going to be an added chip to this team, regardless who's under center. And I believe it now. Because Belichick is thinking, we're going to find out if the success that we've had, was it all Bell or was it all Brady? No one knew for sure for 20 years. It was a great focal point of talk and debate here in New England, and even nationally, if you will. So now we're about to really find out, was it Bill's system or was it Brady's talent? We're about to find out. Just real quick, I just want to give everybody a heads up. You can hit me up on social media, on Twitter, at... Shukri Wright at S H U K R I W R I G H T S. You can also hit me up on on the gram on Instagram at S W R I G H T S R A D I O underscore. That's S Wrights Radio underscore. I'll spell it out again at S W R I G H T S R A D I O underscore. And I wonder, I really do wonder, if you, and I wonder if you're the Patriots, at what point do you say, hmm, we have to evaluate our options here. Evaluate, is that in the guy, or do you think we need to go out and get a quarterback in free agency? It's going to be fascinating. I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm going to tell you why. Part of it is because that, number one, if you look at the landscape now, I mean, because the only big name left in the free agent market 
is Cam is Cam Newton. Teddy Bridgewater signed. He was one option that I was really clamoring that the Patriots should go out and sign if Brady did not return. But Cam Newton, he like I said, he is he has gotten cut by the Carolina Panthers today, and he's available. So I do really wonder if Belichick goes out and get a Cam Newton, if he could, if he does at all, even remotely show interest. But we'll see. Belichick has never really been the the big name guy and so forth, but there's no denying the talent that Cam Newton has. There's no there's no denying it whatsoever. The part that I find that's going to be absolutely fascinating is this. No matter who the next quarterback is, the one thing that I've learned about Belichick after watching him for all these years is this. He's going to hone in on what the quarterback can do, eliminate his weaknesses, and work to maximize his strengths. And that's something that I know that Belichick is going to be working on without question. But how much time will he have to work on it? Who knows? Because right now is usually the time that teams are making draft visits. There's none of that going on right now, especially considering what's going on with the coronavirus and COVID-19 pandemic. Um. Who knows if OTAs or even mini camps will be happening. We just don't know. Rookie camps, no idea, and so forth. That remains to be seen. All of that is in the air right now. And I was actually talking to someone um, yesterday, as a matter of fact, a a very, very reputable source, as a matter of fact, um, about that. And, And I didn't really think about it, but considering only that no one knows when this will end, and whatnot, but it will it will come to an end at some point. But we don't know when or how long it will, how long this will last. But if it does cut into the off season program and so forth, then it will definitely be fascinating as to how this will all unfold and how this will all uh, be worked out. But that remains to be seen. That I can honestly tell you for a fact. That remains to be seen. Now, I want to go back and talk about the psychological impact Brady leaving New England does in fact have on on the fans here in New England. First and foremost, I want to point out that, that I just don't see the possibility of people burning Tom Brady jerseys. And apparently there was already a fan who already did it. I don't know how true it is. But you're always gonna have those knuckleheads out there, but they don't they do not define the entire fan base whatsoever. I just wanna point make that very clear. So one thing I will say is that if you are the Patriots, if you're a Patriots fan in New England, wherever you may be, I wanna point out that life goes on. Life goes on. Next man up. This is why it's so important to understand you root for the name in the front, not the name in the back. It's very easy to fall in love with the player. And don't get me wrong, Brady was absolutely beloved here in New England. But the fact of the matter is, if you truly love the team, then you'll always be about the team and not the player. Because it's easy to become attached, very emotionally attached to players who are basically once in a generation. Now, I want to give you other examples in, in, in other sports and so forth. Like, for example, Bobby Orr. Started his career here in Boston with the Bruins. Finished his career as a Chicago Blackhawk. Ray Bork, another prime example. Played his first, what, 20 plus, 20 20 and a half years here in Boston. 
spent the final year and a half with Colorado to wrap up his career, which famously ended in Game 7 of the 2001 Stanley Cup Finals win over the New Jersey Devils. You know? And also, not to mention, you know, David Ortiz, he didn't begin his career here here in New England. He began elsewhere. And that's the truth. No matter how you may want to slice and dice it, but the fact of the matter is, you talk about a guy who start who starts his career and ends it elsewhere. It happens in sports. Paul Pierce is another example. Celtic for life, but he ended his career as a as a LA Clipper. It's part of the harsh reality of sports, as we know it. And I do wonder. I do wonder, especially in the coming days and weeks ahead, how far do we go in order to maintain the the high level of excellence that's become an expectation in this city and region? And that in itself is something I absolutely wonder. I wonder sincerely. Because if there's one thing that I do know is that this city has become the city of champions. And I don't think it it would just be limited to just one player. But I do wonder this, though. I do wonder that if you are a Boston sports fan, do you think the championship window is done for the Patriots? Or do you think it continues? That remains to be seen. I look forward to seeing the end result of such a loaded question to think about. That'll be all for this episode of the Shukri Rights Podcast. With your host, Shukri Rights, thanks for listening. Stay safe and healthy, and I'll talk to you guys very soon. Take care.